I guess I got to just start with this, man. Who are these guys? Like the first couple of guys that are supposed to get drafted, who are these guys? I don't know anything about them. Hey, Ross. Uh, first of all, thanks for having me. Uh, it's going to be an awesome day today, so I hope everybody's ex- as excited as me about this draft. It's so nice we're going to do it twice, today and tomorrow, which is fantastic. But, I mean, this is the landscape of the basketball world. It's not just about the United States anymore. It's an international game. Most of the best players in the world are international, so it shouldn't come as any surprise to anyone that the top two picks in the draft are all, in all likelihood going to be international players. Zachary Rizache, a six foot ten small forward who plays for JL Borg, drawing some comparisons to guys like Brandon Miller, Trey Murphy. Uh, you know, outstanding shooter, made 39% of his threes this year, has an elite feel for the game, uh, outstanding defender on top of that, guards everyone from one through four. Uh, he's the favorite to go number one. He's been the favorite all year. He's been ranked number one on our big board all season long. Number two, uh, another French player, seven foot one, Alex Sarr. He has maybe the most unique backstory of any prospect in this draft. He moved when he was 14 years old to Spain to play for Real Madrid, and then he went to overtime elite in Atlanta, and he spent this past season in Perth, Australia, with the NBL Next Star program. So, I mean, two uh, incredibly gifted 19-year-olds, probably known more for their defense right now than their offense, but uh, have are very productive on both ends of the floor. So um, it's it's an exciting night for for France. We saw number one pick Victor Wembanyama last year, and this is just going to be something that we're going to see over and over again. The talent level coming out of France is off the charts right now. So why is that? What well, what's going on in France? Is this like the Tony Parker effect? What's going on in France that there's this many good players that are better than any Americans? Well, France is the most ethnically diverse country in Europe. Huge, uh, you know, populations of uh, people with Senegalese, Congolese, Guadeloupe, Ivory Coast descent. It's the same thing that we're seeing on the French soccer team. They're ranked number two in the world. I've spent a lot of time in France over the last 20 years, and every time I step into a gym, you know, for, you know, a youth level game, I mean, just the talent, the physical talent is incredible. There's so much size and length and athleticism, and the infrastructure has really caught up. The coaching has caught up. And we're really seeing French teams make more of an investment in playing these guys at a younger age. Now they saw what, you know, Victor Wimbanyama leading his team to the finals a year ago. Bilal Koulibaly playing, starting, starting at point guard in the finals after barely playing the first half of the season. So I think, you know, basketball is very popular in France in, in no small part due to Tony Parker, but also Nick Batum, Rudy Gobert, Yvonne Fournier, uh, you know, Boris Diaw. So it's, uh, you know, it's been a great legacy of French players, and it's only going to get stronger and stronger now that they have the number one prospect in the world who's playing in the NBA right now, Victor Wenbanyama, a future MVP. We're talking with Jonathan Givoni, who does a terrific job, as you can tell, studying these guys for the NBA draft. Those first two guys you mentioned, Jonathan, are they like – immediate impact guys are they developmental guys for three to five years from now what do you envision their nba path being i think they're both ready to play right away they're high level role players who can step on an nba court and impact the game defensively first and foremost uh, Zachary Rizache played at an exceptionally high level of basketball this year. Uh, his team made the finals of the Euro Cup. They made the semifinals of the French playoffs. He was a leading player for them. They were the best defensive team in both of the leagues that he competed in, and he was their best defender. When you know the six foot ten guy, when they needed to get a stop, they would put him on a point guard. So that's going to translate to the NBA right away. And his instincts are going to translate too. He's a outstanding pastor he's a great cutter uh he just the game comes very easily for him and he can shoot the ball at a very high level so every team in the nba is looking for that alex Sarr, the same thing he led the australian nbl which is a very strong league 
in block percentage this season. So he's going to come in ready to impact the game on that end right away. He also made quite a few threes. He's very good pushing the ball off the defensive glass. Uh, He's good out of short rolls. He's an excellent pick-and-roll finisher. So, you know, a guy with those kind of physical attributes who can – who already has the, you know, the the ability to impact the game on the defensive end. I mean, any team that drafts him, most likely Washington, is going to slot him in right away and and give him the runway to develop his into his full potential.